Attempting to recreate a Bob Ross painting has its pros and cons in the spray paint world. I'm going to give it a shot, though. Um, the painting comes from the Season 24, Episode 1 of his Joy of Painting. And so what I'm doing right now is just laying down the background. Um, and it takes multiple layers of paint to get it nice and smooth. You can't really just do kind of a one-shot deal. And also to get it at the... Um, when I say color ranges that you're looking for. So I'm just laying a lot of different colors of pink and yellow and purple and some white to get a real soft background. And this background has to be completely dry before you can lay it down any other paint. I know that some people do this with a um, can of clear and fire, um, some with a uh, heat gun uh, or a blow dryer. Um, this one, I just walked away from it for about an hour. Now I'm laying down the purple mountains. Um, and it takes quite a bit of paint to get this thick enough to... There's no streaks or anything being seen through. So you could either spray the paint in a cup or what I'm doing here is just spraying it on a piece of wax paper so it doesn't absorb into the paper. Um, and now I'm just going to blow dry it with, on high heat until I get it to where I can put the highlights and low lights on. Here I'm just showing how I'm spraying some white and some dark gray just to get a kind of marble effect like the way he does. I was surprised that the knife held a decent amount of paint on the edge. I was expecting it to just drip off and run off, but I don't know if it's like capillary attraction or whatever it is, but it did work out better than I expected. So that was kind of cool. And now I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's where it, it's just kind of angling and moving it around until you get it to where you want it to be. Uh, still going to be some practicing to do um, how to pull and how much to push down, how much paint to put on the edge of the knife, all those types of things. There's a lot of factors involved. But I think it worked out pretty well. I, I, I can't really think of another tool or system to use to get the similar effect that uh, those that Bob Ross's paintings have. Um, and so I think so far the knife is working the best. And I'm putting down some blue. I wished I would have made this a little lighter, more muted. It was a little too bright of a blue. But I'm more focused on how I'm doing this versus how it's looking. Um, I'm trying to figure out tools, systems, paint viscosity, um, brushes, and now I'm putting down some gray for the mist, but it's way too dark. Uh, I went and bought a lighter gray, but I just haven't used it yet. I'll do that in my next painting. So um, now I'm putting down the foreground mountain in that painting. Um, same thing. I just I made sure everything was dry underneath. Otherwise, you'd just be pulling up the paint. It'd just be it'd just be turning into a muddy mess um, if you don't dry each layer before you do the next top coat. And then again, I'll just dry that and do the exact same thing I did with the uh, background mountains. Same knife effect. Same colors. The success of getting it as close as you can to Bob Ross style is is a lot of what he says to do. It's just really light touch, especially here. Um, obviously, there's a lot of differences between oil base and spray paint. Oil base is much more forgiving. You have much more time to work, whereas spray paint is is pretty much drying out of the can, so your time is limited. So if you're trying to get something like this effect, you're really going to have to have a lot of paint going on. So I'm using it over and over and over. And you might have to come back and um, do things, you know, dark darks over again. Now I'm just putting that uh, foreground uh, mountain range or hill range. And, you know, again, I'm just kind of doing my best with the color, kind of muting a little bit so it looks still in the background and putting a little water highlight on there because that's all water below. So um, 
the thing I was thinking about at this point was reflections. And I was thinking, eh, I'm not even going to try to do reflections in this painting just because there's so many other techniques and parts and elements of this painting that I kind of want to do. And I just feel like that might be too much. But I do end up uh, attempting it at the end. Um, here I'm just continuing to make more of the hills that are in his painting, um, bring it, introducing green. Uh, and again, everything has to be dry in the background. Uh, the uh, fan brush works really good for these because you get that sharp edge and then you can also create that, um, you know, the grassy top edge that he creates by flipping it up. And so that actually worked really good. Um, I would say once you've got the uh, sky mountains and all that, the rest is like super forgiving. Like these trees, once you're at this point where you're doing the trees and bushes, it's it's all downhill. It's super easy. It's just like what he's doing on his paintings. It's just a matter of mixing the color you want. But it really does um, work the exact same way he does. You just take the fan brush and just do exactly what he says on his videos and you're you're, you'll be successful and it's, it's super easy. And then, um, you know, and, and, the, and the paint is opaque enough to do this. Those fan brushes work really good, which was surprised. This is just a, a liner for the trunk. I know he uses a knife for the trunks, but it didn't work. It just cut into the paint too much. So I just used a liner brush and then did a dark brown and I come back with a highlight. Uh, tan like a like a light brown or almost a tan and then come back with the green highlights again this is about you can make it more muted you can make it brighter you can make it more green more yellow anything you want I'm just I just took this right out of a can so this is just a lighter green that I took right out of the can now I'm just doing the bushes with a um, half inch pig bristle brush just got at a either online or hardware store super cheap <laughs> just and it and it really did a good job that the fact that it's round gives you that bush kind of uh form that makes it really super easy and now i'm just putting some dark ground to make the uh, land and this is a little more difficult just because it's kind of like you're trying to make you're filling it in the mountain range you you want some see-through but this you want to fill in so it might be easier to make use a uh, foam brush but it it seemed to work okay uh you might have to just put more paint down um, and come back and do low light highlight low light highlight until you get it to where you want it to be because that's what i had to do is it kind of wasn't it was kind of mushing in and around it was incorporating the paints were colors were incorporating too much might let the dark dry and then come back and do the highlight and then i'm just doing the water line here that's super easy just a liner brush with white um next is going to be highlights on the bushes again this is super easy this is about um less is more and what happened was i uh didn't like that bright, bright color, so I tried to uh, reduce it. It's better to mix your color first, get it more muted or more, you know, this is, looks way too bright to me. So I had to, so I tried to come back with some more muted colors or, you know, see if I could soften a little. And I, it was, it was all just too bright to me. And now I'm at, yeah, adding an even brighter green, which is even making it more brighter. And, uh, and and it's starting to fill in the dark green, which he talks about. Don't don't fill in that dark dark green too much. It's gonna otherwise it's gonna you're gonna lose those shadow effects. And that's what was happening to me here. Uh, it was uh, too much. Now I'm introducing a brown and orange colors, and that I liked. I actually liked that. But it again, it was n losing the dark green. And now I'm trying to save it by putting in dark green which help, but it just adds more work and more time to the painting that didn't need to happen. Um, now I'm trying the reflection. And what I did was I laid the green down, light green down, put some orange, put some dark color, put just kind of just blobbed a bunch of color in it. And then I sprayed it with clear. And I was pleasantly surprised that that actually caused it to kind of um, mirror a little bit. Then I took my two inch brush 
and here I'm trying to move it around, see if that'll work, didn't really do anything. Then I take my two inch brush with the clear still wet and I just kind of very gently go over it with a two inch, two inch brush to see if I can get that effect. First I start going horizontal. I go, oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to go vertical. So the horizontal kind of started the process, but then pulling it down actually made it look better. Um, so it's possible. I just need to work on this some more. Here's the final painting. It's a lot brighter and more, you know, than I kind of was thinking. It, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay for my attempt. Um, I have two other attempts. One was just trying to figure out how to even make anything work. And then the other one was kind of my first attempt at this particular um, uh, painting. And it was actually kind of like the mountain range is better than, than the one I than the one I just showed you in the demonstration. Um, and actually there's aspects I do like about this. It's a little softer and it's not as it's not as bright and vivid. But you know, there's there's uh, pros and cons to both things. Just just enjoyed doing it and learning the process and well, we'll keep on learning together. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you get a chance to do some uh, some of these spray painting landscapes too. Um, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.